Hi, my name is Tim. Thanks for joining me. Just before we get into the video, I just wanted to point out that the content within this video has been sourced from RP Data as well as Heron Todd White. So, and I'll have links to their websites in the video description. Also, it's important to understand that this isn't financial advice. If you're looking to invest, then you really need to sit down with a suitably qualified professional or professionals to discuss your particular scenario. Okay, so if we start with an overview of the Australian dwelling values, we can see at the top three month, uh, national home values rose 4.8% in September quarter, which is eased from a 6.1% increase in the June quarter. Following down from there, the 12 month time frame dwelling values in Australia are 20.3% higher over the past 12 months, which is the highest annual appreciation since a year ending June. 1989 and then the last piece of information there capital cities so in the three months to september the top 25 percent of values across capital cities rose 5.7 percent compared to 2.6 percent across the lowest 25 percent of values so the top end of the market has been the most or the better performing if you like so the top 25 percent of home values across capital cities rose 5.7% compared to 26 for the lowest 25% of values. So if we have a look at the three month changes for Australian dwelling values, we can see the top there, Australia recorded a 4.8% growth. Combined regionals uh, was up 5.1% and then the combined uh, or combined capitals up 4.7%. So positive growth in, over the last three months across Australia, across the combined regionals, and across the combined capitals. If we then take that out to 12 months, the 12 month changes, uh, again across Australia, 20.3%, combined regionals, 23.1%, combined capitals, 19.5%. All right, so let's have a look at state by state. So across here at the top on the left hand side, um, we can see that we've got uh, September, quarter, and year so um, that applies to the three rows of um, figures there if so if we move across to Adelaide so for the S September uh, Adelaide saw a rise of 1.9 percent for the quarter a rise of 5.5 percent and for the year 19.1 percent so you can follow through and, and see what that what those um, figures and what those growth rates look like for the September, for the quarter and for the year across each of the uh, those different states. Um, we can see also if we do that, that um, Canberra had a, a growth rate of 24.4% for the 12 months and Hobart 26.8% for the 12 months. So they were the two highest performing capital cities and followed pretty closely behind there by Sydney, 23.6%. So property market indicators. Now, these are three factors that I use on, as an investor and I work with my clients as a way to find out where the market's heading and what, what are the indicators affecting the market or or telling us what the market has been doing. How is it trending? So the first one there is medium days on market. So this is three months to July. Uh, in green, we're going to have figures for 2021 and then in the purple figures for 2020. So across Australia, it's taking over the last three, oh, three months to July, 30 days to sell a property um, compared to 2020, which was 42 days. For the combined regionals, if we move down 33 days, compared again to last year of 52 days and then for the combined capitals 29 days uh, compared to 36 days this time last year so moving across the middle column we see vendor discounting again three months to july and again both figures for 2021 and 2020 so for australia there's actually a negative or minus 2.9 percent vendor discounting so this is how much the vendor is willing to discount from the sales price to sell the property. So obviously if we've got low figures like we can see there, then again matched with the median days on market, then properties are selling quite quickly. So it's a it's a seller's market and therefore um, there's that much demand that 
vendors don't need to reduce the asking price or the selling price. So we can see that across Australia, the combined regions, uh, regionals, I beg your pardon, as well as the combined capital. So across all those three areas, they're all very, very low. And then the final one or the third one is auction clearance rates. So auction clearance rates have recovered strongly through September. For the past four weeks, the average final clearance rate across the combined capital cities was 74.3%. So 74.3% of properties that are um, advertised uh, through the method of selling via auction have basically sold under auction conditions. So 74.3% is a high figure. Um, so those three indicators i think are very very uh, well can provide a lot of information to us as investors as to what the market looks like obviously again it's for it takes a little while to gather this information however and look um right now where it's so obvious what the market's doing you kind of say oh, yeah well you know that's good but we can't we, we knew that however as the market tightens or we don't know which way it's heading then it's harder to read what the market's doing then these three uh, indicators, are, I think, are, are really worthwhile, at least considering using as a way to determine which way the market's heading. Okay, so let's have a quick look at rental rates. So this is the annual change to September 2021. So at uh, the top there, Australia, rental rates have increased by 8.9%. Combined regionals saw an increase of 12.5% and then the combined capital is 7.5%. So rental rates are on the move as well, which doesn't always happen in a rising market. Typically, you'll find that they don't rise because people who are renting are now looking to acquire their own property to live in. So sometimes there can be a, a greater uh, supply of rental properties. Um, but in this case, we can see there, and again, there's been a reasonable uh, increase to rental rates as well. Now, if we look at um, gross rental yields for the same period, September 2021, we can see again, Australia has a, a gross rental yield of 3.3%, combined regionals 4.4%, and then combined capitals 3%. So even though we saw in the last slide that rental rates are increasing, they're obviously not keeping up anywhere near the growth rate. So if you look at a growth rate in property values, so obviously, well, you may understand and if you don't then the rental yields are really just the annual rent divided by the the purchase price or the property value if you like so 3.3 is quite low that tells us that even though those rental rates have been increasing they're nowhere near the pace at which property values are increasing so 3.3 percent for australia 4.4 percent for combined regionals and three percent for combined capitals Okay, so let's have a look at gross rental yields for each capital city. Uh, so we can see Adelaide 4.1, Brisbane 3.9, Canberra 3.9, Darwin uh, has the highest rental yield, gross rental yield at 6.2%. And again, if we study those figures, we can see that Sydney, in fact, has the lowest gross rental yield at 2.5%. So if we move through then to regional areas, so the gross rental yields for the different states, uh, we can see South Australia 5.8%. Again, we follow through, you can see the gross rental yield for um, each state there. Um, so just looking at those numbers, Northern Territory has the highest gross rental yield for regionals, 7.1%. Uh, and what do we see there? That 3.7% is the lowest in, uh, and that's for Victoria. So um, they're the gross rental yields for regionals. All right, so just a quick finance and lending uh, update. So through August, the combined value of housing lending fell 4.3%, taking the total housing finance mon minus 5.6% lower through the three months to August. The monthly decline was driven by a negative 6.6% decline in owner-occupied finance, while investor finance rose 1.5% in the month. So other than South Australia, each state and territory has seen an increase in investment property financing through August. Now the RBA statement highlights. 
So the cash rate target was held at 0.1%. The RBA expects that the economic conditions will not be conducive to a cash rate target rise until 2024 under the central scenario. The bank flagged the rise in house prices driven by credit demand from both owner occupiers and investors emphasise the importance of maintaining lending standards and the importance of appropriate loan serviceability buffers. Now, if you're not sure what loan serviceability buffers are, please um, uh, check out my video on just that, on assessment rates. Um, it's important that as investors we understand that whilst interest rates are low, there are other factors and responsibilities that lenders have to take to make sure that we uh, can afford to service the debt. And also, too, it can be used, the buffers can be used, serviceability buffers can be used as a way of slowing down finance as well. So um, be sure to check out my other video on assessment rates, and there'll be a link in the uh, description box underneath the video. All right, let's finish up with a summary of the property market across Australia. So annual growth rate is now the fastest since year ending June 1989. Every capital city and all regional areas have recorded positive change over the past month, with Hobart and Canberra recording the largest growth. The market has moved past its peak in March, caused by higher entry barriers for non-homeowners and fewer government incentives. First home buyer leaning down 23% January through to August. Nationally, homes are selling in 35 days and vendor discounting levels remain around record lows. Number of dwelling sales across Australia, 25.5% higher than the five-year average. So housing trends around Australia remain positive. Growth in house value is supported by the expectation that mortgage rates will remain at record lows for an extended period. The RBA stated that the cash rate was unlikely to move higher until 2024. Now, because of that, credit conditions may tighten. The Reserve Bank and APRA to focus on the quality of lending standards and trends in housing debt and will be keeping an eye on household spending when uh, pandemic restrictions lift and the assessment rate may lift. So again, the, the, it's going to be a close eye kept on how we start spending now that we're allowed out and moving around and what effect that's going to have on affordability, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So Reserve Bank and APRA are going to focus on the quality of lending standards and the trends in housing debt. And then the last one there, finally, housing market may ease with supply levels increasing and buyers having more choice and less urgency. So it'll be really interesting to see how over the next few months, how these numbers, how these figures, how this data starts changing and whether we actually do see uh, an ease back in the in market growth, in property value growth, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll, be, we'll keep an eye on it. And again, the next update will come in November. So we can see then and maybe compare data to see exactly what we can see as far as trends occurring and which way the market's actually heading. Well, look, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful and interesting. If you haven't done so already, it would be fantastic if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel if you feel comfortable in doing so. I look forward to catching up with you again soon. And whatever you choose to do, I wish you all the best with your journey. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.